Hello, everyone. Welcome. So today, we're going to be talking about speed at scale. And so we have a really great agenda ahead of us today. My name is Sophie Garden, and I've been with ThoughtSpot for about three and a half years now. I'm a solutions engineer. And over the course of those three years, I've really had the great experience of being able to witness these themes we're going to talk about today, speed and scale, across our customers' growth. So for instance, we have a Fortune 100 retailer that started off their first deployment about three years ago with one terabyte of data and five users. And now, three years later, they are at over 80 terabytes in production and thousands of users. So we have an absolute great schedule for you guys today. We're going to start off with our engineering director, Satyam Shakar, who's going to talk to us about performance and how ThoughtSpot is uniquely addressing it. And then we're going to move into an amazing panel, all ThoughtSpot customers. And we'll hear some of their stories about how they're leveraging ThoughtSpot to provide speed at scale. So with that, let's give a warm welcome to Satyam. Thank you, Sophie. And hello, everyone. It is our fundamental belief that speed is critical to the success of analytics in the enterprise. Speed enables ad hoc analysis for faster decision making. Without the business users getting blocked on creation of cubes, drill paths, or reports handed down to them. Speed enables iteration to improve the quality of decisions made. And analytic systems that affords iteration allows its users to draw more meaningful insights. Speed enables new interactive user experiences, such as search, voice, and AI. Speed is core to everything that we do at ThoughtSpot. Right from day one, we have focused on delivering insights at the speed of thought. We challenge ourselves to build a system similar to Google in performance, with a simple and interactive user experience, combined with the accuracy required for the enterprise. Organizations going through this digital transformations are dealing with the problems of scale. Data scale is exploding due to a few different reasons. Raw data volume is increasing. The number of data sources that need to be pulled in for analysis is also increasing. The proliferation of cloud and hybrid architectures adds to this complexity. Also, for ad hoc analysis, the data needs to be analyzed at its finest grain. This large and complex data needs to be analyzed. Ad hoc answers need to be created on variety of questions. And these answers need to be shared on the platform of user's choice to move the needle on enterprise scale decision making. ThoughtSpot is architected from the ground up to enable this modern user experience for organizations of all scale and sizes. Over the next few minutes, we'll look at how our unique architecture enables this. Here are some highlights of our architecture which enables this lightning fast speed at scale. Our one of its kind relational search engine is built on breakthrough patented technology that powers our search and voice interface. The in-memory distributed database is optimized for analytical work workloads to deliver instant insights. Finally, all large scale user interactions whether it's dashboarding, sharing, or other social features, are powered through an in-memory version graph store. Let's do a deeper dive into each of these. At the core of our platform is the relational search engine. The unique challenge here, here is to understand all user queries over any real-world schema and to guide users using intelligent suggestions. Search and natural language interpretations are made by a TensorFlow-based NLP engine. This is enabled via a massive 
in memory distributed index this index structure is highly available memory efficient and fast with bounded tail latencies at its core this index is essentially a distributed tri with additional hooks for substring searches ranked completions and auto corrections our relational search engine becomes smarter with usage thanks to a sophisticated machine learning infrastructure built into it and finally all of this needs to be secured to the grain of a single data value our relational search engine has security baked in at every level to give you an idea of what this looks like in production here are some key metrics from one of our large enterprise deployments in that deployment this search infrastructure has indexed over 1 billion tokens the size of the index is over 100 gigabytes at that scale the indexing pipeline is able to consume over 2 million tokens per second per thread the relational search engine receives more than 1 million searches per day and it is able to do all the heavy lifting that we saw in the previous slide within 100 milliseconds the next system that i'll talk about is our fast calculation engine it's called falcon falcon is a distributed in memory database architected from the ground up for analytical workloads all searches are interpreted by our search engine and translated to a falcon query or a relational query this relational query is then sent to falcon for execution falcon generates an optimal distributed plan for the query that it receives it further compiles this plan into custom code generated on the fly which is then natively executed on the hardware this ability to execute each query as a native program allows falcon to process over billions of rows in matter of seconds further falcon uses hardware features such as simd instructions and vectorization to enhance the speed of query execution falcon runs over hundreds of servers executing complex queries over massive data sets at interactive speed it is mindful of the cost of dram and uses columnar compression to efficiently represent data loaded in memory it also does not enforce unnecessary denormalization instead it is able to process large joins efficiently at run time at this scale node and service failures are a norm rather than an exception falcon is highly available across all the scenarios it persists all its in memory data in ram disk that survives process restarts in thoughtspot 5 which is announced today falcon uh, is also able to handle node restarts and failures by using disk layout optimizations and replication the demo that we saw in the keynote today had over 100 billion rows in one of our large deployments falcon hosts over 100 terabytes of data over hundreds of nodes this sick a performance of a query over single table falcon is able to process that query in over in with around 100 billion rows per second queries involving large joins over multiple tables are processed at about 10 billion rows currently 10 billion rows per second finally let's talk about our home grown graph store called atlas atlas is a distributed in memory version graph store for connected objects it houses all the metadata such as visualizations answers and pinboards created inside a thoughtspot cluster 
Atlas is optimized for nested structures. Modeling these objects as a graph allows Atlas to pull in relevant pieces of information as needed. The graph structure allows Atlas to apply the security rules at a very granular level, which is notoriously hard to do with traditional RDBMS settings. Using MVCC, Atlas provides a consistent view of the entire metadata during a lifetime of a request. This also allows Atlas to maximize the throughput that it can provide. The graph structure also enables Atlas to do dependency aware crashing. Simply put, in, it enables efficient invalidations of these complex nested structures. Finally, the multi-versioning built into Atlas allows fast rollback and efficient recovery. One of our large deployments has over 2.5 million nodes with 7 million edges, with approximately 1 million users registered in the system. At that scale, Atlas is able to provide 30 requests per second per node at a latency of about 100 milliseconds. In summary, we saw how ThoughtSpot has enabled interactive ad hoc analytics and iteration using three key pieces, pieces of infrastructure. Our relational search engine, our distributed database, Falcon, and the in-memory graph store called Atlas. These three key pieces of infrastructure allow, allows ThoughtSpot to scale to millions of users, doing billions of searches over hundreds of billions of rows. Now let me invite Sophie to take the panel discussion further. Thanks so much, Satyam. Great introduction. So I'd love to, I'm really excited actually to introduce our panelists today. We have John Coaster from Fannie Mae. We have Subkumar Ponram from True Blue. Harinder Singh from AB and Bev. And we have Cam Curry from National uh, ba Australia Bank. Australia Bank, yeah. And Sukumar, or sorry, Satyam will also stay on our panel as well. I'm missing a photo. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, panelists, so much for being here today. So I want to uh, get started really quickly, just brief introduction. If you can say your name, your role, and then how ThoughtSpot was brought in and how long you've been a customer. Sure. So I'm John Coaster with Fannie Mae. I lead our analytics, BI, and metrics for our operations division. And um, we were one of the early adopters of ThoughtSpot. Um, first saw the product in March of 2015, got it in production early 2016. So I believe we were customer number 10 at the time. So one of the early adopters. Awesome, thanks. So, um, I'm Sukumar. Um, I work with TrueBlue. Uh, we are a leading staffing provider in North America. We have our footprint all over the world, um, but we are a big player in uh, the American market. Um, last year, we put around 350,000 users to uh, work. Um, most of them are temporary workers, and we served around 100,000 customers. So um, we're rich with um, history of people and skills. Um, and we came across ThoughtSpot in uh, 2016, June 2016. Um, we were looking uh, to roll out an analytics for, um, for some of our field users who've been asking for answers for a long time and we couldn't find time to turn, them the an turn over the answers um, quick enough for them. So we're looking for an analytics platform for my field users. And um, we, we really thought ThoughtSpot thought, thought had that potential and uh, bought it in. And uh, we're, we, you know, we went live for 2,500 of our users um, 10 months ago. And um, awesome. we've been in production for uh, 10 months now. Great. Harinder? I'm Harinder Singh. I lead data strategy and architecture at AB and uh, We are a global company. Uh, we sell our product in 126 countries. We operate in 50 countries, 500 plus brands. Hopefully, you hope you, uh, most of you guys are happy customers of Budweiser, Corona, or Stella. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my uh, first experience with ThoughtSpot was about uh, four years ago uh, when I was at Walmart. And I was quite impressed with the uh, uh, the, the, the digital transformation that we were, uh, you know, at that uh, phase right at that point, and how quickly business users were able to adapt 
a BI and visualization tool and essentially automatically turn into self-service analytics, which was our goal. Um, Great. Good. Uh, hi, uh, Cam Curry from National Australia Bank. I head up the um, enterprise cloud BI practice uh, for NAB. Um, I've been on the journey with ThoughtSpot for about 14 months. I think I made the first phone call to Martin Gaffney uh, last year. Um, and I think I'm, a, I'm now a client. For the last three hours, I think we've signed <laughs> something. So I'm officially an owner of a product. Um, what sort of struck me with, with ThoughtSpot, and I sort of mentioned this today at a, at, a, at a luncheon, was I've been in this game for 20 odd years and all the BI tools are, are pretty much the same. They, they all have a chart and they all have some data that, that you put into a grid. So ThoughtSpot was a wee bit different. It wasn't a BI publishing tool. Um, and I found it through Gartner and I went through the, the um, Quadrant, yep. uh, I think they have. Quadrant. And um, it was the one that really stuck out as something completely different. So um, I'm very excited to now have the product. Now we just have to execute on it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for introducing yourselves. So I'd like to get started with the first question. I mean, this entire session is all about speed at scale, right? So I'd like to hear from each of you what that means for your organization and also the analytical solutions that you're trying to provide. Sure. So for me at Fannie Mae, um, our scale comes from just large amounts of data, not necessarily large amounts of users. So um, we are the largest player in the secondary mortgage market here in the US. Um, we have a guaranteed mortgage portfolio that's worth over $3 trillion with a T. Um, from a transactional basis, teams that I support um, handle cash management, and it's about a trillion dollars a month coming into and out of the organization, which is a large number of transactions. Um, so the, it just generates a lot of data, right? But our company only has about seven to 8,000 employees, so it's, it's not a huge employee base that, that we have as users, but it's mainly from a transactional data perspective that, that we really care about scale. Yeah, um, to me it's the other side of things, right? So it's, it's the people. Um, uh, when we evaluated the product, I was really evaluating it for 700 of my um, top field managers. Um, and uh, when we had two nodes in production, we saw how much we can do more with it, and I put some answers out, and I, all, I realized this could serve my branch. Um, there's 2,000 more of them, and I was able to open that up in a week, uh, get my business approval in production within a week for 2,000 more users. So it's, uh, to me, that, that scale at the speed we could do it, um, I could never do that in a traditional BI sense. Um, I come from a traditional BI world. Yeah, yeah. and that, yeah. Was, that was 2,000 users with only two nodes too, right? Just two nodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. amazing. Harinder? For us, um, you know, as a company, we mostly grew through M&A, and that meant hundreds of you know, data silos, about 27 different BI visualization tools, 27 that I know of. <laughs> uh, at some point, I just stopped counting. <laughs> and uh, it's almost like if they sold it, we bought it, right? Um, and one of the things we wanted to do was simplify the landscape, because anything that we wanted to do, depending on the market or the country we wanted to do, we could only do it at a certain scale. It, it wasn't going to scale very quickly because of different silos, not just in the data, but also in the systems <coughs> that users use. Uh, so part of it was uh, landscape simplification, which automatically meant uh, time to market and also cost savings. Um, so that's kind of you know, where it stands for me in terms of scale. Awesome. Um, I can only really talk to the POC that we did. Obviously, we haven't done anything in anger. But um, we, we did a pretty robust POC where we took um, proper volumes of prod data, so we're in the sort of 200, 300 million row uh, area. And we tested against what we currently do with our on-premise system. So one activity that, that we do every month is we adjust financials, and then we restate financials um, back about five years. And obviously you have to recalculate year on year, you know, prior, prior periods. Um, and that process with an Oracle stack and cubes and another five layers of rolling stuff up and moving stuff around uh, it took about 16 hours. So if I, if I change a banker's revenue by $1, I'm, I'm waiting 16 hours for that to refresh. So we tested that with ThoughtSpot. It was my one key thing that I, I wanted to get out of the product um, as a first, first use case. And with ThoughtSpot, that's three seconds. And that's with one node. 
So it was just an absolute mind-blowing experience that right. our month-end process is held up by the process latency. Um, and now we can maybe move our, move our month-end a lot further forward. But that's a very small use case, but that's a real shift. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I want to hear a little bit about what the state was in your BI kind of environment before ThoughtSpot came on board. So I know that a couple of you guys have mentioned, I think Candy said 26 different tools, or under 27. Yeah, you you know, every tool <laughs> under the sun, Four, basically. Yeah. So what was it, what were some of those challenges that you guys were facing in regards to perhaps performance or speed with some of the existing tool set you already had? Sure. So um, when I inherited the BI function, I, I called it very much the McDonald's model, where our customers would place an order and we would fill it, and then they'd say, no, I wanted extra pickles, and we'd take it back and code some extra pickles in and <laughs> give it back, and it was just this uh, very hectic kind of uh, not very interesting way to work. Yep. Um, so I was really looking for a way to shift the culture, not just of my own team, but of my customers as well, into, look, we're more internal consultants that really just want to understand the business problem that you're trying to solve, and we'll help you solve it. Um, and so prior to ThoughtSpot, we had kind of a, a big business object shop. We had some micro strategy. We had some Tableau, um, kind of in various pockets doing different things, mainly business objects used for data dumps, right? It was just a, a culture of just give me the data. I don't care what you think about it. Just, just give it to me. I'll, I'll work with it. I'll do my own thing. Um, and then we settled on ThoughtSpot as our kind of ad hoc tool and Tableau as our canned reporting tool. Yep. Um, and we found that those work quite well in concert with one another. Um, we've gotten away from the data dumps. Uh, we literally used to um, produce a dashboard, the, the business customer called it, which was basically a table with 6,000 rows. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to do with that? A, it's not a dashboard. B, I have no idea how you can even use this. Um, right. And so, it was really part of a culture shift to, yeah. to get them more into you know, trusting my team to provide them with information and not just data. Right, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm. And did any of you guys also experience that sort of backlog that John's talking about, with like waiting and the McDonald's model, if you will? Yeah, yeah well, I, can, I, can, I can comment <laughs> yeah. on that. So we've, on average, with our current stack, it takes us nine months from th first thought bubble, mm -hmm. to getting something into prod, it's roughly nine, nine, nine months wait time, which is not going to help, help anybody really. Um, and our environment is sort of 26,000 reports, which is pretty much more than the people that work in the company. Um, we have 5,500 uh, data marts that we have to navigate through. So um, it's, it's really moving from a dashboard building function to uh, a team that can now look at the data first and not have to worry about what the dashboards are going to look. And if people want to generate 500 questions, they can. Sure and they can do it safely. Um, right. At the moment, we don't even know if the intel that, that is sent out is actually making any business value whatsoever. So right. there's a, hopefully a real shift from being a, a pure um, building standard dashboards to moving away to being a, a proper self-service function. Yeah, and you're clearing up all that clutter, those reports, like you said, more reports than employees. Yep. You know, what are they doing, right? Yeah, there's, there's, yeah there, was, uh, there was four people who generated 6,000 reports. Yeah. So they're busy. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Busy. Yeah. I can give you two examples. Um, one from you know Airbnb, where I've been for about two years. But what I think would also help to go back a few years at Walmart, uh, where you know I was creating a backlog for just basic canned reports, nothing fancy, and uh, we had uh, I would say about 500 plus uh, folks in the merchandising team. Uh, they're responsible for the people who to decide you know what goes on the site. I was part of e-commerce, so what goes on the site, what are we going to sell, and so on. And uh, for a basic canned report for their category, let's say toys, right? Uh, they would ask for some information and we would put them in the backlog for about 12 months. And it was horrible. And imagine we're in the e-commerce, you know, we're in the e-commerce space where you're, you're trying to personalize your customer in real time. And getting a report 12 months was just absurd. Um, so we said, how can we compress that timeline? Uh, so the first thing we did is we moved from a uh, product that works more on a universe base. Uh, so we moved to something more, I think, like a Tableau, I think. That helped compress from 12 months to maybe three months, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, but still, three months was, again, just 
it's not, not enough. Not enough. Yeah, not and uh, you know, it's it's a problem that we wanted to solve. And uh, we didn't really knew any, any, any way that technology could do it because the process was still the same. You'd get a request from the business uh, for some information, some report, and you go through the cycle of requirements, development, prototype, QN, back to. So when we were looking at uh, ThoughtSpot, I think uh, you know, we were probably, uh, if not the first, one of the first. Initially, we thought of it as uh, just another BI visualization tool. I think what really triggered for us was the search capability. Uh, you know, because what I like to say now at my current uh, AB is uh, imagine if uh, you had to uh, tell Google a month before what you're about to search. <laughs> <laughs> what would that feel like? <laughs> That's exactly what we were in, right? Except it was 12 months and then three months. Um, so that really, we thought, but we pretty much reduced it to 10 seconds or less. Uh, you know, we kind of build a normalized, uh, we build a couple of 360 products, order 360, customer 360, sales 360, and now we just gave it out to merchandising people and said, have at it. 10 seconds or less, they could, uh, you know, it didn't necessarily resolve 100% of their questions, but definitely 80% of it, which is a big deal when you have 2,000 plus people, you know. Uh, so that was then at Walmart. Uh, more recently at AB and Bev, as I said, we have, you know, quite a few uh, data warehouses and marts. We're in the process of decommissioning one of them in the process of simplifying it. Mm -hmm. And that one, process, one data warehouse has about 20,000 reports that have been built over the last 15 plus years. So now the decommissioning process is so much more complex because the underlying system you can replace. What are you going to do with this thousands of reports that have been built? Options are rebuild them, which is just not an option. Uh, so again, this is where ThoughtSpot comes in because now instead of you know rebuilding all its 15,000 plus reports, we are probably will probably still build some, maybe 500, but the remaining all of them will just go away because here's all the data. Yeah, right. Self-service. I don't need to bring 100 plus engineers to rebuild all the stuff. Yeah. Business, you know your data better than the engineers. How about it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of what Cam was saying earlier as well, right? Exactly. So many reports sitting around, it's not necessary. Did any of you guys in that pre-thought spot state have to, I mean, we talked a lot about the process that significantly improved and the process that kind of led you to look for thought spot. Anything on the data side? Did you guys have to pre-aggregate data in any way, cubes? Yeah. So um, to me, the challenge is twofold, right? Mm -hmm. um, number one, as an architect, as I create these reports <coughs> over and over, I have to think about three different systems I'm looking at here. Right. Um, I'm looking at my web server, I'm looking at my application server, I'm looking at my database server, and I'm connecting with my network team, application. So it's, it's like a lot of processes right. involved to get that one thing right. Um, and uh, like to Tableau, it, it did reduce the time of creating the reports, right. but then this plumbing work of aggregating data, that never went away, right? Yeah. And, I did a lot of work doing aggregation. That, like, a lot of time spent on yeah. doing aggregation, getting that right, and it just, the work moved from Cognos to SSIS. Nothing changed, <laughs> right? And so um, it was it was a challenge. And yeah. uh, one thing when we saw ThoughtSpot, or when I was trying to put my data in ThoughtSpot, is the ch change in uh, mindset for me. Like, I'm looking for detailed data now to mm -hmm. throw it into ThoughtSpot. It's a totally different way of doing BI to me. Um, yeah, I never was thinking I should get the granular data to put it in my BI tool. I was always looking at, oh, how do I aggregate this data? Yep. Right, it's a different kind of thinking. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So that actually brings up a kind of nice segue into, you know, what is life now that you guys, I know we're in different states here, so Cam, just, you know, bringing on. <laughs> yep. But what does life look like now in your BI infrastructure um, having ThoughtSpot? What are some things that maybe you never really, or your users never could do before that are now accessible? Sure. So we are finding just a bunch of different ways to use ThoughtSpot. Sure. Um, that you know, once we have it in house, it's like, hey, maybe there are some other cool things we could do with that. Um, so, you know, I brought it in for the the typical self service use case to ease some of the burden on my ad hoc reporting team. Um, did that? Check that box. Done. Um, we've got teams that are actually using it to build employee scorecards. We've got someone here in the audience today that has taken it, run with it, and said, you know what, I can upload my own data, merge it with a bunch of other stuff, and create these score these scorecards that are tailored to the individual, um, really showcasing some of the capabilities of you know, using formulas and yeah. uh, the different visualization functions. And then we've got some, some folks on our tech side that are just like, hey, this is like a giant in-memory database. <laughs> 
and that holds a lot of power. I don't even care about the search. I don't even care about the visualization. I just want the speed <laughs> of that database, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we've kind of taken it and run with it across the organization to awesome. kind of suit our needs. Yeah. yeah. Um, to me, um, I met with my market manager last week. Um, I was sitting with her talking about how we're doing, and we're looking at one branch's data, mm -hmm. right? Um, earlier, used to me, used, the conversation used to be, oh, is this branch doing well compared to last year? Right, that's pretty much it. Now I have these pin boards put together where I tell her, oh, here's your sales, this branch is doing well or not. Here's her gross margin, is it trending good or bad, right? And we saw it's bad, right? right. And immediately I have an answer right below it to say how their customer segmentation for that branch is, right? Yeah. And um, because I couldn't go that level before. Yeah. I have this detailed data right there, which tells her, oh, your local segmentation is struggling. That's why we usually get a margin from our local customers. Um, if we, we get a lot of sales from our sales, national customers, but it's the local customer who bring in the main margin, and we immediately know it's struggling, right? right? Like, and we had the branch manager next to us, and we're talking to her about like, what she should be <laughs> focused on, and, and I could, in fact, go and tell her a lot of local customers, how many local customers we had and list of them, right? Mm -hmm. Even though local customer turnover is always high, but still she has some numbers to call and that's, that's a big deal. Um, right. Well, because in the one hand, you're finding the insight very quickly because yes. you now have access to that data. Right. But at the same time, it also makes it actionable. You know, your branch manager now can go out and act upon that right. knowledge. Right. Do you guys, Herminder, Cam, do you guys have any other kind of examples of something, I guess, you know, ThoughtSpot or Search Bar, or the level of data, being able to provide that sort of actionable response? Yeah, so look, again, um, I was very pleased to see that mobile, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, came out today. Um, yeah. There'll be roughly 10,000 people who are, who are frontline staff at the NAB um, who go sit with clients yep. uh, who are non-technical and they shouldn't be technical, they should sell, sell product and manage the customer. Yep. So, um, I think one of our first use cases when we go in, into Prod will be making sure that our data set is going to enable the use of mobility first, maybe you know right. before desktop, because um, there is a real need for us to get people away from their desks and being more more, more mobile. And because we've now moved to cloud, it makes that so much more you know easier to do. Yeah, absolutely. For us, I would say. You know, and personally, um, I would say I love by the technology part. You know, when you were showing the graph and I was taking pictures, because mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. It, the technology is amazing, right? But at the end of the day, it boils down to uh, business transformation. Because uh, how many of you guys were in a scenario when you asked for a sales number, or number of customers, or how many products do we have? You probably get different results. Never one concrete answer that everybody in the company can agree to, right? Well, when you run into a scenario. If you have something that a single layer of data, right, you can quickly go in and in front of everybody in the boardroom or in a technical meeting, you can go and run a number and look at it, everybody that agrees to, right? And if there are disagreements, you can always go to the next level, all the level below that, all the level below that, all the way to the lowest granularity and see where the, the data is the same, it's the understanding of the people about the data is different. So you, can, so you will get to the point where you realize, oh, this is what I meant this versus you said this, right? Uh, so that to me, when you are able to do that, you're able to make decisions much faster instead of spending cycles or trying to figure out, you know, is the data right? Or does it really mean that? So to me, that's the biggest game changer. Definitely. I totally agree. Yeah. So when we, when we talk about speed and scale, I, I do think we talk about it in kind of two different ways. There is um, scale in terms of data, and then there's scale in terms of users. So can each of you guys comment on maybe what your current user base is today and how much data you have loaded and different, what sources are maybe feeding that, um, and maybe any goals that you have in the future, too? Um, so again, I'll break it down into two, right? Uh, so at Walmart, we started off at about five-ish merchandising people. And uh, when I left about a year and a half ago, we had at least a couple thousand just merchandising people. That's one department. Then there's finance, there's marketing, and all the other areas, right? So the scale was pretty big, both in terms of data and the number of users. And the adoption was very rapid. Um, in the current scenario at AB, we are using it for uh, sales and marketing. The data volume is relatively low, uh, but, we are tr but I think we have a lot more use cases. Uh, so my next use case, for example, is procurement, because mm -hmm. we buy raw materials across the world and we want to be able to synthesize it and see you know, where can we get cost savings. 
Uh, so, and in supply chain, for example, in pricing optimization, so we see a lot of different use cases where uh, we will move forward in that. <clears throat> so, in terms of the of the use case for NAB, we sort of break it into two. You got the front office and the and the back office. So. Mm -hmm. There's roughly around 10,000 users uh, in the front office and about 15 in the back office. Yeah, it's a lot of users. So we're, um, we're going to put, well, ThoughtSpot is now the, the NAB's managed sales service BI tool. That's a primary tool. Mm -hmm. So we now have 27 tools. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> Hopefully we get down to one. It's high. <laughs> um, and our data landscape at the moment is around 12 terabytes. But don't get too excited. I think that's a lot. We need to get less than that. Um, because we duplicate data and we, when we roll things sure. up and we do all the, the old stuff, right? Yeah. So I think um, on balance right now where we are in terms of the content we actually serve up, we are around the four to five terabyte mark. That's a guess, yeah. but that's, that's where I feel it's sort of landing. So we've got a big audience and yeah. pretty big data land, you know, landscape for our size, size of, a, of a business. And it's also the other option around we may in the future go with, with a regulator outside of the bank and instead of them coming to us and asking questions, we package up something for them, we'd yep. give them thought spot and they can then get back to some kind of you know, return yep. and they can do their own self-service. Yeah, um, currently for us, um, most of the data in ThoughtSpot is being fed from our data warehouse. Um, yep. One thing when we saw ThoughtSpot, what we did is really discipline ourselves on the back end um, right away to say, um, here's a system which already was getting all this data from different systems and we bought that together um, we at the most granular level and then um, fed it into ThoughtSpot. Um, and this is just operational data we have at this moment. And I only have my operational folks using it at this right. point too. Um, so the next plan is to bring my risk folks, uh, finance folks in. Um, and we, are, we have deployed it only for one, for only, one, only one business line and we have two more to go. So um, right. yeah, there, the, the potential, this is just for like the actual providing actuals for people, right? And um, if I take my AI, the spot IQ capabilities, um, predictive modeling, and I have a lot of use cases for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Looking forward to it. So for us, like I said, it's mainly around just the volume of data. We, yep. we basically have monthly loan performance data on every third house in the US going back to 1973. Uh, it's about 17 terabytes worth of data. Um, we, as any, 80-year-old company would have. Our, our data infrastructure is a little fragmented here and there, some legacy issues that we're working to clean up, um, but that's a multi-year effort. And um, ThoughtSpot provided us a way to kind of glue some things together and make it work and um, get us the, the ability to actually analyze some of that large amount of data that we have. Absolutely. So we're running about two minutes left, and I wanted to make sure that we offered up any questions from the audience? Does anyone have a question that they want to ask our panelists here today, or Satyam, about his discussion and performance earlier? We can keep rolling through questions if not. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk a little bit, just to kind of close out, um, a little bit about some of the business value, maybe that you've already seen and what you hope to see in the future as well. Sure, so I'll kick it off. Um, Right after we implemented ThoughtSpot, um, we unfortunately had the natural disasters in the Houston right. area, Hurricane Harvey hit, and um, typically it's a few week process to even figure out what our exposure is. We need to kind of figure out what homes we have in those impacted areas. We've got an entire team that's kind of on standby that does this. Sure. And um, we said, look, I can load in the zip codes from FEMA from an Excel sheet and be able to tell you within literally minutes, you know, what our exposure is at a, at a high level, at least, to right. tell us what how many properties we have in these zip codes, uh, what types of properties they are, their values, things like that. Um, and that was pretty impactful to yeah. be able to say, you know what, as the natural disaster is happening, we're kind of getting news reports and saying, you know, hey, here's what I think our exposure is. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes sense. Um, to me, I think I mentioned a story about my market manager, right? We, uh, the conversation we were having has changed a little bit, right? Um, that's a great thing. And one thing when we replied it to these 2,000 users I did is um, turn off the search for them. Um, I wanted them, I, I want to build a model where people trust it. So I want to learn from them on how, what kind of answer or questions they're asking and how they're using my answers. Um, so the next real thing is really open that up for those folks um, and bring in, this predictive capability, right? Um, our, our business is 
really um, seasonal and ad hoc, right? Um, we do, any given day, workers come in and say, I need a job, right? Um, and sometimes we have job in hand, we don't have workers, right? So we always are ta tackling this supply demand a problem every single day. Um, a predictive capability uh, would be a huge use for us. Um, so we're, we're definitely looking into that. And the pricing strategy too. Um, right now we're a static pricing model. Um, we have we go every year with a plan and say, this is what we're gonna do with our existing customers, this is what we're gonna do with our new customers. Um, and now I think this is, this, the providing enough data to the system can help us do a dynamic pricing on things. Okay. So that'll be huge for us. Um, we're looking forward to that, yes. Great. For us, I think two of the biggest uh, business value aspects are time to market. We can make the decisions uh, in minutes or days now versus <coughs> weeks and months. That's the number one. Uh, so the second one is cost savings. Uh, everything in terms of uh, simplifying the landscape, simplifying the number of products we have and we have to maintain and have a bigger team to support that, all of that reducing footprint. So to me, those two are the biggest uh, business values. Okay. Uh, and just, just quickly, I mean, we, we want to put the customer first. Yep. So we want to use ThoughtSpot to really understand the customer a lot better. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're a business, so you want to make you know make sure you're getting some revenue off the off the customer, but also keeping their money safe. Yeah. That's a, that's a big issue at the moment for us. Um, and making sure that if we are lending, we've got the right capital and, and things like that. So it's really in terms of a of, of a data strategy, it's customer first, and then we bolt in all the metrics that are going to underlie that that customer's experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank all of you guys so much for being up here today and Satyam for giving that great discussion all about performance. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.